Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're looking at the divisibility proof by induction section so we can answer questions from exercise 8b. So I'm going to do these types of questions slightly differently to how they're done in the book but still proving the same thing. Let's get started on the first one. I'm going to go through three examples. Uh, prove by induction that 3 to the power of 2n plus 11 is divisible by 4 for all positive integers um, where n exists in the positive integers, okay? So, same steps, same steps as before, basis assumption, inductive, and conclusion. Basis step will prove that n equals 1 case. So, substitute in n equals 1, and you'll get 3 squared plus the 18, and you get 20, which is clearly divisible by uh, 4. Next step is to assume that our theorem works for n equals k. So in this case here, 3 to the power of 2k plus 11 is divisible by 4. And then comes the inductive step. So here is, gonna, here is how we're going to work it. We're going to substitute in f of k plus 1 into our formula uh, 3 to the power of 2n. So 3 to the power of 2 brackets k plus 1 close brackets plus 11. <clears throat> Expand those brackets on the indice there, so it's 3 to the power of 2k plus 2. Now the step that we need to do is to split up the power of 2k plus 2 into 3 to the power of 2k times 3 to the power of 2. It's, in, it's sort of doing in reverse the process of timesing indices, so you add the powers. So we're going to split up the powers through timesing indices together. We're then going to call the 3 squared a 9, because that's what it's effectively equal to. And now comes the tricky bit, the tr bit that people generally find quite difficult with these types of um, proofs. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to squeeze in 3 to the power of 2k plus 11, where we have a 3 to the power of 2k. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move a plus 11 inside that bracket so that I can then um, use my assumption step in step two. But you can see clearly that if I were to expand the brackets here I'll have too much than what I previously had on the line above it. And if I expand the brackets here I'm going to get plus 99 whereas actually I want plus 11. So what I'm going to have to do after this is subtract 88. So I'm just going to adjust once I've uh, forced in my plus 11 um, and then effectively now what I've got is two components here one that is divisible by 4 from the assumption step and one that has clearly a factor of 4 by 22 times so in this case here my conclusion needs to involve um, this process that I've done here as well so the first part of my conclusion here is f of k plus 1 is clearly a multiple of 4 by the subtraction of two multiples of 4. The first one was by the assumption, and the second one was by a factor of 4, and we can clearly see that. And then the second part of the conclusion comes from before. So as we have proven our theorem true for n equals 1, and given that f of k is true, we have also shown that f of k plus 1 is true. Therefore, by mathematical induction, we have proved that 3 to the power of 2n plus 11 is divisible by 4 for all n existing in the positive integers. Okay, so that's how you do proof by induction type questions to do with divisibility. Let's have a go at a second one then. So prove by induction that the expression n cubed minus 7n plus 9 is divisible by 3 for all positive integers and exists in positive integers. So same three steps as before. First substitute in n equals 1. So substitute in n equals 1 and we get 3. So yeah, clearly divisible by 3 if the number is 3. Next step is your assumption step. So assume your theorem is true for n equals k. Then comes the inductive step. So start off with f of k plus 1, because this is what you want to show is divisible by 3. Expand out your brackets. And 
group together your terms. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do after we've grouped together our cubic equation here is to effectively split up this cubic equation here into some uh, multiple of the assumption step. In this case, it's only going to be one multiple of the assumption step because I've just got a plain k cubed here. And then I'm going to look for what the remainder is after that. So the first step is going to be split up your assumption from what you had above and then think about what the remainder will be after that. So I didn't really use my 3k squared, so I'll have to add that on at the end. I've got minus 7k, but really what I'm looking for in the line above is minus 4k, so my remainder here is going to be plus 3k. And I've got a plus 9 in here, but really from the line above I only need plus 3, so to balance that out I've got a minus 6 here. And then I can factor out a factor of 3 from the second term here. And now you can clearly see I've got two additions of factors of 3. One because there is a factor of 3 at the start of the expression. And this one here because that's what I assumed at the start. So here in the conclusion it's going to go like this. f of k plus 1 is clearly a multiple of 3 by the addition of two multiples of 3. One by the assumption and one by a factor of 3. As we have shown our theorem true for n equals 1, and given that f of k is true, we have shown that f of k plus 1 is true, is divisible by 4. Uh, by mathematical induction, we have proved that n cubed minus 7n plus 9 is divisible by 3 for all n existing in the positive integers. Okay, So the same happened here as it did in the first step. We need to somehow take what we've got and slot in our assumption. If you don't slot in the assumption at all at any stage, it's going to be very, very difficult to get it. Okay, And you probably wouldn't need to be using proof by induction if you can prove it that way. In proof by induction, you're always going to use your assumption step in your inductive step. Okay, So try and factor out the assumption and then see what you've got left over, and that should be a multiple of what you're looking to show. Final one then, quite a difficult one here. Prove by induction that the expression 11 to the power of n plus 1 plus 12 to the power of 2n minus 1 is divisible by 133 for all positive integers n existing in the positive integers. So, uh, this example requires more manipulation to go through, but essentially it's still these four steps here. Base step, n equals 1. Substitute in n equals 1. Evaluate and you get 133. Basic. Okay, always you can always at least get pick up one mark from these types of questions by doing the base step. Assumption. Assume your theorem is true for n equals k. So just replace your theorem uh, where there's an n, replace it with k. And that expression there is going to be divisible by 133. We're going to be looking to slot this in into our next step. Okay, so do keep an eye out for it. So now what we need to do is prove the theorem works for n equals k plus 1. So it starts with f of k plus 1. And this is going to equal 11 to the power of k plus 1 plus 1 plus 12 to the power of 2k plus 1 minus 1. Simplify your powers and we get this. Now really we want to turn all of our powers back into these types of powers that we had up here because we're going to need to include the assumption step at some stage. So I'm going to take one power out of this 11 to the power of k plus 2 and I'm going to take two powers out of this um, 12 to the power of 2k plus 1 because there is a two power difference between 2k plus 1 and 2k minus 1. So I'm going to rewrite both of the powers like this. I'm going to take one power of the 11 out and two powers of the 12 out. And then I'm going to evaluate the 12 squared. So it's now 144. And now what I'm going to do is I want this whole um, expression here in our assumption step to occur inside one brackets. So I'm going to 
squeeze in 12 to the power of 2k minus 1 into this bracket here as well. So now I've squeezed 12k to the power of 2k minus 1 into this bracket here. Uh, and I've got an 11 at the front. Now that's going to impact on things because when I expand this, I'm going to have 11 of these 12 to the 2k minus 1s. But in actual fact, I want 144 of these 12 to the power of 2k minus 1s. So how many more do I need? Uh, well, I've got 11. I need 144. So I need an extra 133. That's where the divisibility by 133 is going to come back in of these 12 to the power of 2k minus 1s. Okay, so then clearly we've got our conclusion step here. We've got one expression that has the assumption step in it, and that is divisible by 133. And we've got one um, algebraic term here where we have um, a, a clearly a factor of 133 there. So to conclude, um, f of k plus 1 is clearly a multiple of 133 by the addition of two multiples of 133, one by assumption, one by a factor. And then we conclude by, as we have shown our theorem true for n equals 1, and given that f of k is true, we have shown that f of k plus 1 is true. Therefore, by mathematical induction, we have proved our theorem is true um, for all positive integers. Okay, so do be aware we're only proving for positive integers here. Don't forget to write that at the end of your conclusion. Right. Okay, so your turn to have a go at this question here then. So do try and persevere through this one. It's going to be difficult at first, but do try and squeeze in your assumption step into the third stage. Okay, so try your best. All right then, so let's have a go at this question here then. So let's give ourselves lots of space here. First step will be to substitute in n equals 1. So this is going to give us 5 to the 1 plus 9 to the 1 plus 2. So that's going to give us 14, 15, 16. Okay, so that's all good. Don't need to go any further with that. Uh, next is to assume our theorem true for n equals k. So... Our theorem is going to be 5 to the k plus 9 to the k plus 2 is divisible by 4. Okay, so we're going to assume it's divisible by 4 for all positive integers n. Next step is going to now um, prove that our function with k plus 1 substituted in is also divisible by 4, so is divisible by 4. So let's go ahead, let's substitute in k plus 1 then, so f of k plus 1 is going to equal 5 to the k plus 1 plus 9 to the k plus 1 plus 2, yeah, and what we can do from there is, well we want the same powers to be on this stage here as they were on this stage here, so I'm going to split off this to be 5 times 5 to the k, and the same thing with the 9, 9 times 9 to the k plus the 2. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a bracket with this whole assumption step in it next to the 5. So it's going to be 5 times 5 to the k plus 9 to the k plus 2, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that this line here balances out with this line here. So if I expand, I'm going to get 5 lots of 5 to the k. Beautiful, that's what I've already got. 5 times 9 to the k, well I'm going to need here an extra 4 lots of 9 to the k. And I'm going to get 10 here, but I only want 2, so I'm going to have to subtract 8 here. Okay, and what I can also do as well is I can just simplify that remainder section so that it's clearly got a factor of 4 in. So it's going to be 4 times by 9 to the k minus 8. Okay, so there we are. So we've got now a situation here where we've got f of k plus 1 is the sum of one, fa one definite uh, multiple of 4 uh, by its assumption. 
and this thing here clearly has a factor of 4 in, so that's divisible by 4 as well. And anything that's the sum of two multiples of 4 must also be a multiple of 4. So proving our third step here, now the conclusion. And in the conclusion, all we have to do is write um, as f of k plus 1 is or has been shown or has been shown to be the sum my pen's not keeping up here the sum of two multiples of 4 f k plus 1 is also a multiple of 4. What you could have done with this question as well is not to have factorised it uh, and just kept it as 3 additions of something that's clearly a divisible by 4 and that would have been fine as well multiple of 4 and then you would conclude with your with your bog standard sentence below so as we've proven our theorem true for n equals 1 and we have assumed our theorem true for n equals k we have clearly shown our theorem true for n equals k plus 1 um, therefore, by mathematical induction, um, 5 to the power of n plus 9 to the power of n plus 2 is divisible by 4 for all positive integers n. Okay, so that's how we do these proof by uh, induction divisibility type questions. Then do have some practice on exercise uh, 8b. This does require a lot of practice. The first ones are quite easy. Do have a go at those later ones as well that are more difficult, such as this one here. Um, but do persevere through them. And once you've got the idea of proof by induction, including the assumption step in your third step, they're not too bad, actually. Okay, thanks for watching.